Hello everyone, my name is Ray Nahesa and I'm going to present your work Kauri Scalable BFT Consensus with Pipeline Tree-Based Dissemination and Aggregation. In the past few years there has been an ever-increasing industrial interest concerning permission blockchains that support large numbers of consensus participants like Facebook's DM or Corda. Most of these solutions rely on BFT consensus, which most commonly are either PBFT derivatives or hot stuff. PBFT uses an all-to-all -all scheme where the leader broadcasts a block proposal following several rounds of broadcast to collect two subsequent quorums. In the case of a failure, after a timeout, a reconfiguration, also called a few change, is started and the leader is switched until the correct process is reached. And as such, within an optimal number of reconfiguration steps, a robust configuration is achieved and consensus can terminate. PBFT has several advantages, including the high resilience, low latency, and optimal reconfiguration steps. However, it suffers from high message complexity. Hotstuff attempts to alleviate this by using a star communication scheme instead, where the leader broadcasts the blocks and then aggregates and disseminates the votes of the other processes. And in the presence of failures, similar to BBFT, Hotstuff switches the leader in a reconfiguration process until a correct process is reached and consensus can again be achieved within an optimal number of reconfiguration steps. As such, it offers high resilience at a reduced message complexity, still offering optimal reconfigurations. However, at twice the latency cost due to the round trip instead of the podcast. Nonetheless, this family of approaches is inherently unscalable, as one or more processes need to send, receive and process n messages, leading to a bandwidth and CPU bottleneck. Due to this reason, alternatives emerged, most notably solutions based on committees and solutions that use dissemination and aggregation trees. Committees are really straightforward. Instead of requiring all processes to participate in consensus, a different subset of processes is elected each round. However, there's a certain possibility to eventually reach a committee with a majority of faulty nodes, and consensus will fail. Thus, these approaches either consider lower resilience or do not provide deterministic safety. A solution that solves all of these problems are tree-based approaches, where votes are disseminated and aggregated through a tree. This way, distributing a load equally among the internal nodes while maintaining the same resilience as PFD and hot stuff. However, trees are hard to reconfigure and have a much higher inherent latency than stars, even resulting in low throughput in a geographic distributed setting. In the case of a failure, it is not enough to just switch the leader as there's a high possibility that even after F attempts, no robust configuration is found. It says always either a fault internal or root node. This is especially complicated as there's a factorial number of trees where only a small fraction of those is robust. In terms of latency, while the message travels through the system, the majority of the nodes are going to stay idle for the majority of the entire process. As such, the process suffers from high latency resulting in poor resource utilization. And that's what Cowrie attempts to solve. Cowrie is a tree-based approach to address the scalability limitations of other BFT implementations. And it does that by addressing the following main challenges. It offers still optimal reconfiguration for small numbers of failures F, it compensates the extra latency through pipelining and it still offers high resilience. Let's start how we deal with reconfigurations in Kauri. We want to construct a tree without any faulty internal nodes to achieve consensus. And we start from a set of nodes where a small subset is faulty. And we divide the nodes into bins of roughly the same size, where each bin is at least the size of the number of internal nodes. So six or more in this example. As such, if we switch through the bins and I send each bin to the internal node positions, as long as we have more bins than faulty nodes, we are guaranteed to eventually reach a bin without any faulty nodes and, as such, a robust configuration within F plus one steps, which is optimal. Next, let's talk about the latency. Instead of producing one block at a time, we leverage the fact that the leader of the system knows the hash of the first block and is able to produce the next block optimistically before knowing the consensus result already. And this way it's possible to propose multiple blocks in a row, 
allowing to fully leverage the entire resources of the entire system. And the only question that it remains is how many messages we can actually pipeline in the system. So for this we have to talk about a performance model for Cowrie because for small uh, values we're going to have underutilized resources resulting in a lower throughput than would be possible and for very large values we're going to have congestion and high latency and because of that we need a performance model to configure that accordingly. Uh, considering the total time frame it takes to finish a round which is mostly made up from the hop latency depending on the depth of the tree and the number of hops in the tree including the comp computation time at each step. We can calculate then a subset of this, which is the idle time, which in a nutshell is the total time subtracting the sending time, which is the time it takes to propagate the block, which depends mostly on bandwidth, block size and fan out, and the processing time. This allows us to calculate how many additional blocks we can fit inside this idle time. And we denote this the pipelining stretch. In a nutshell, the smaller the fan out and the greater the idle time, the bigger the resulting pipelining stretch. For more details and example numbers, please check out our paper. Finally, we did an extensive experimental evaluation in different settings, of which I'll quickly describe you some of the most significant ones. We implemented our prototype on top of hot stuff and deployed it on 20 physical machines with up to 20 virtual machines per physical machine. We did that on Grid 5000 and simulated the network with Neteng. Um, this first particular experiment was executed with three different numbers of processes namely 100, 200 and 400 in a setting with 100 millisecond round trip time and 100 MB links, which is like an inner European or inner US setting. Kauri is presented with the two blue lines, one with and one without pipelining, and hot stuff presented in the red line. We configured the pipeline stretch of Kauri according to the presented theoretical model, resulting in a stretch between 4 and 6. The performance gap between Corian and Hot Stuff is very significant in this example, with an increasing advantage at larger scale, reaching up to 26 times the throughput in this experiment. And we also can see this due to the inherent scalability issues, as Hot Stuff not only uh, is much worse than Cori, but even Cori without pipelining starts per performing better above 200 processes and has almost twice the throughput at 400 processes. And the same trend continues in the next experiment. In this experiment, we used a larger latency setting at 200 millisecond round loop latency and 25 MB links, which is like a geographic blockchain setting that is used throughout the literature. And we measured both throughput and latency for hard stuff in Kari. And in order to vary the injected system load, we altered the number of operations in blocks, resulting in different block sizes. Similar to the previous experiment, we configured Kauri according to our theoretical model with a pipelining stretch between 3 for the very large blocks and 25 for the very small blocks. First, I'll point out two oddities in this graph. At, as at very small block sizes, the very high throughput in the limited number of available machines, our system was oversaturated. And as such, this data point has a much lower throughput and even suffers, suffers a latency penalty. On the other hand, at large block sizes, we can't fully utilize the system resources as we can't just pipeline half a block, which results in a loss of a bit of throughput. The main takeaway of these results is that due to the bottleneck of the star topology, Cori not only outperforms hot stuff in all configurations significantly, but also suffers a significantly less dramatic latency increase. Therefore, Cori not only displays better throughput, but in many situations when the system starts operating closer to the limits, also in terms of latency. In this final experiment, we evaluated the impact of failures on the system. We measure this in the same setting as the previous experiment with 200 milliseconds round trip time and 25 MB links. We configure the system in a way such that the current leader fails after 40 seconds and consecutively after being elected, the next two leaders fail in a similar manner. At this considerably low number of failures, we see that Cori not only reconfigures in a similar time period as hot stuff, but is also able to scale pipelining back up to the original value to attain similar throughput values as before. Concluding, Cori scales to hundreds of processes and outperforms previous work by a factor up to 80 to 28 times without requiring any resilience trade-offs and still opti offering optimal reconfiguration for small numbers of failures.
You can find much more experimental results in the paper and we have a prototype available on GitHub. Thanks everyone for listening and I'm happy to answer any questions.